exactly, or it has to be exactly then, or what happens if you don't, but apparently it's pretty bad because Ambarish was uh, very determined he was going to break his fast. But what happened was Durvasa showed up on his doorstep just at that moment. And of course, when a guest comes, especially a, a very exalted guest, one has to just drop everything that he's doing and receive his guest nicely. So Durvasa came and uh, Ambarish received him and then he said, please go take your bath and then we will uh, serve prasadam. Meanwhile, the time came for breaking Ikadashi. And it was about, the time was about to expire. Uh, Durvasa did this deliberately. He's such a rascal. He did this deliberately. And then um, Ambarish uh, consulted with his brahmana, his priest, and he said, I, you know, it's time to break the fast, but my guest is still bathing. He was like, you know, Shiva Namo Shivaya, taking his sweet time, right? And just knowing that the Vaishnava, like Ambarish, would be placed into difficulty this way. There's still so much enmity between the Vaishnavas and the Shaivites in India. It's, it's crazy, but that's the way it is. So Ambarish asked his priest, what should I do? And the priest said, well, if you drink water, then that would be breaking the fast, but not breaking the fast at the same time because you're not taking f solid food. So King Ambarish sipped some, some Charinamrita, some water that had been used to bathe the deities. And in that way, he broke his fast, Kadashi fast. So then Durvasa appears and he's furious. <laughs> you broke your fast huh? while your guest was taking bath. This is in violation of the codes of receiving Brahmana and all this. And he began to rant and rave. Huh? And he, he offended. Uh, King Ambarish, he was going to curse him. And at that moment, the Vishnu's wheel, the chakra, appeared and began to chase Durvasa Muni. And Durvasa, he went from this planet to that planet, to all, all the heavenly planets. He approached King Indra, he approached Lord Shiva, he approached even Lord Brahma, and they all said, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do. It's, it's Lord Vishnu's chakra. You, you better go see Lord Vishnu, you know? That's your only hope. So he even went to, to the Satyaloka planet. And within this universe, there's a planet, a transcendental planet, where Lord Vishnu appears. And he, he went to Lord Vishnu and he said, Lord Vishnu, please save me. Call off your chakra. You know, this Sudarshan chakra is so strong, it would kill anybody. It's the wheel of time. And, and Vishnu said, you know, what can I do? You offended the lotus feet of a Vaishnava. The only remedy is to go back to this Vaishnava and take shelter of his lotus feet. Take shelter of his lotus feet means you become his servant. Okay? Take shelter means that you become a subordinate person. You see? How can you take shelter of someone if you're the same or greater? As you cannot. You can only take shelter if you are less. So you have, that means he was telling Durvasa, you, you assume a humble mood and you approach Ambarish Maharaj and you beg for his mercy and forgiveness. And that's the only way that you can attain uh, release from this chakra. So, of course, then he immediately went back to Bharat Varsha, where Ambarish Maharaj was then. Maharaj, Ambarish, all this time had been fasting, waiting for him to come back. So, just see, Ambarish is a very nice character. And uh, so, Durvasa Muni surrendered to his lotus feet and became like his disciple, like his servant, and said, please instruct me what I did wrong. And Ambarish was very mild, and he, he says, well, I don't take any offense, but Lord Vishnu can never tolerate to see one of his devotees offended. And so he sends the wheel of time 
The wheel of time is the, uh, the ultimate weapon of the Lord. Uh, he says in Bhagavad Gita, I am time, destroyer of the worlds. So everything in this material world is destroyed by time. If Vishnu does not release you from the wheel of time, samsara, then you cannot get relief from this material existence. Uh, so this, the moral of the story is if that one offends a Vaishnava, especially a, a pure Vaishnava, a guru, then his, the only remedy for this offense is to take shelter of that Vaishnava. You cannot go to the demigods, you cannot go to the previous acharyas, you cannot go to the sadhus, you cannot go to, the, to any other authority, even the Lord himself will not give you shelter. You have to go back to that Vaishnava whom you offended and take shelter of his lotus feet, become his servant, and take instruction to correct the offense. So if someone takes shelter, or uh, if some especially takes initiation falsely, and then um, with no intention of actually being a servant of their guru, especially if they take initiation with the intention to disrupt or try to take over the uh, guru's mission or anything like that. Oh, this is a very serious offense. Um, my god brothers, there was, there was a coup in ISKCON, an internal coup where Srila Prabhupada was actually uh, voted off of the board of directors of North American ISKCON in 1969. Between 1967 and 1969, this coup took place. And Srila Prabhupada's instruction, which he recorded in a document called the Direction of Management, was completely ignored, never implemented by the GBC. Even though this was supposed to be the charter for the GBC, how everything was to be organized, it was never done. And uh, this is a great offense. This is like the, the greatest offense uh, for the disciples of the spiritual master not to follow their own spiritual master's direct order for how his mission should be organized. You know, Prabhupada used to say, if I ask for water and you give me milk, are you serving me? Huh? I'm thirsty. I want water. I don't want milk. Milk was too heavy. Huh? If you're very thirsty and you drink milk, you become even more thirsty. So water, even water with a little lemon in it, is very refreshing when it's very hot and you're thirsty. So if I ask for water and then you bring me milk, saying, oh, milk is better. <laughs> See, it's more expensive and so on, more nourishing. No, that's not service. That's not service. That's insubordination. Prabhupada also said his mood was that the order of the spiritual master should be like the order of a military commander in the army. Military commander in the army gives an order. You go there and fight. And the soldier says, no, he can be shot. In time of war, huh? martial law, they have, you know, the troops are fighting on the front, right? And in the back, they have the military police. And their orders are, you see anybody running, they're shot. Immediately, no trial, nothing. Huh? You run away, bang. So the order of the spiritual master should be like the order of a military commander on the battlefield. That was Prabhupada's mood. He writes this, and you can read it. Look it up in the Veda base. Huh? Look up the words military discipline in the Veda base, and you will find there's several quotations where Prabhupada says, the order of the spiritual master should be followed like under military discipline. So, Srila Prabhupada, in other words, expected that his disciples would follow his literal order, just like a command, like, yes, sir, just go do it. So this mood of insubordination that his disciples displayed was absolutely offensive 
and unacceptable. And as a result, the preaching in North America was, was crippled after that. Uh, maybe that's what they wanted for some reason, uh, which we're not going to speculate about. But uh, it certainly was a, a true grave offense to Srila Prabhupada. And as a result, most of those leaders now have fallen down. Most of the men who made that decision, who took that vote, are no longer devotees. In fact, most of them are dead. Huh? And if you see, yeah, the chakra, the wheel of time. So if you see, uh, there are so many devotees that accept these different understandings, uh, like the Ritvik theory or the uh, GBC two-thirds vote uh, guru theory, or now they have the GBC no objection